The Didact. The Forerunner trilogy of books and Halo 4 introduced a new big bad for the Halo universe. A Forerunner with immense power and a deep-seated hatred for humanity. Throughout three books, a game, and a comic book series, we saw the rise and fall of this would-be godlike figure. His end coming in an offshoot comic book series never sat well with pretty much anyone. Halo Epitaph is a fitting final chapter, adding depth, sadness, and heart to a character while simultaneously filling in the gaps of Halo 4, 5, and even infinite storylines. Allow me to break down why in the Xbox era review of Halo Epitaph. Halo Epitaph spans a long period of time, starting in the near-immediate aftermath of the Didact's death at the hands of his composers, all the way through the beginning of Halo Infinite. Trapped just outside the Domain, the remnants of the Didact's mind slowly come together in a new digital form. The first third or so of the book is about the Didact's mind piecing itself back together. It is a strange setting, both unsettling and dour. Slowly but surely, the pace quickens as the Didact reforms, leading us throughout his history in flashback and uh, forerunner space magic forms. The Domain is still recovering from the effects of the Halo rings firing some 100,000 years prior. No one can enter, including a returning character last seen in Halo 5. Getting an understanding of who the Warden Eternal is and why he was not present in Halo Infinite is one of the many questions the book deftly answers. Epitaph is a culmination of Greg Bear's incredible work started in the Forerunner trilogy. I don't think anyone was particularly happy with Halo 5's story after it abandoned the Forerunner-tinged weirdness of 4's campaign. Halo Infinite moved to a more focused, grounded approach that was better received, but the time skip it employed left a lot of hanging plot threads. Epitaph uses the hero's journey setup, with struggles to overcome, many of them, before success could ever even be dreamed of. The Didact was an unrepentant murderer in Halo 4. His anger at humanity over their ancestors' actions drove him pretty nuts. There was a never-ending rot inside of him, eating away until all he had left was that rage. Walking a character like that back and turning him into something more complex is no easy task. It's not an incredibly long book either, as I read it in a few sittings over roughly five hours. So I think that Epitaph's greatest accomplishment is how for 305 pages, Kelly Gay manages to tell a compelling narrative while answering major questions that I kinda never thought would be. How do the Guardians function? What is Cortana's end goal? Who is the Warden Eternal? And where was he during Infinite are but a few of the things you will learn. She cleverly extends scenes from the games by showing what happened just before or shortly after them, and there is no retconning. Instead, more clarity is given to motivations and consequences. The biggest of them all is a satisfying reason why Cortana was so different in Halo 5 and what changed with her in Halo Infinite. She goes from feeling completely foreign in 5 to becoming something I finally understand. I hope that 343 Industries stays the course with their story arc. Halo Infinite looked ready to have the franchise's first campaign DLC until that was cancelled and the studio's management was overhauled. Epitaph continues the extended lore's hard work of building an overall narrative that I am really hoping I get to see through. In conclusion, the ending of the book is full of emotion, learning, and hope, because Halo Epitaph is a brilliantly written book that earns its major payoffs. If it is the last we see of the Didact, I am finally satisfied, as he has been given an excellent send-off by a wonderfully talented author.